What's up guys, this is Heiss. Today we're coming at you from the Colorado Railroad Museum here in the Roundhouse. And yes, I'm a little confused wearing my GTO hat in the Roundhouse. Life's hard sometimes. But I wanted to talk about something that is kind of counterintuitive that we haven't really covered on the channel yet because it hasn't gotten cold here until now. And that is the fact that it's actually kind of cold in the cab of a steam engine when it's cold outside, which sounds ridiculous because you stare at the whole boiler and when you're at 200 psi all of these big steel sheets are at about 400 degrees so you're basically on an oven for lack of better terms but up in the cab of the 491 when you're sitting in the engineer's seat or you're sitting in the fireman's seat or you're out here on the gangway it is surprisingly cold even if it's like 20 or 30 degrees outside, it can be pretty cold. And if it's colder than that, it can get really cold, particularly with the wind. So the railroads developed a couple things to actually help mitigate that and make the cabs a lot more comfortable. So that's what we're gonna talk about. But first, coffee. If you uh, like the look of an es and uh, branded mug, check out the YouTube store. It should be below every video or you can click on the channel and go find it. But we've got t-shirts and mugs and all sorts of things that all help support the channel too. So if uh, you like the idea of a K36 rolled over with your morning coffee like I do, we're the same kind of weird. So the first thing that we can talk about is the interesting little nuanced detail of how the cabs are sealed up. The Interstate Commerce Commission, or the ICC, was the early regulator for the railroads before we had the FRA. And they actually mandated early on any protrusion through the cab had to be minimized as much as possible. So you'll see here, this is the pipe for the deck hose coming off of the injector on the 491. It's got an extra little collar mounted around it. And here's where a pipe used to run out of the 491 and it had to be blanked over. And as you look up top, you can even see where the whistle pole comes through, the whistle lever. There is a sliding piece of sheet metal that has to raise and lower with the whistle pole so that the whistle pole is actually surrounded by metal so that there's no hole or gap for air to come through. Now, obviously with 491 and her tired cab and uh, <laughs> lots of changes over the years, there's a couple unblanked holes and uh, a couple things that wouldn't hold up to the ICC regulations, but they don't exist anymore and it doesn't really matter as we're not going down the railroad 25 mile an hour or anything like that. But you can see everything has to be well cordoned off so that no cold air can come in. Here's the more interesting and fun piece of this for me is that the Rio Grande equipped all their locomotives with curtains. These are called cab curtains, and they're made out of four pieces, basically. And it's a really, really thick canvas. This is like eighth of an inch plus, closer to like a quarter inch almost, thick canvas. And they mount on these boards on the back of the cab. The board sandwiches the curtain. And then the curtain's got this big wooden rod on it with a key so you can slot it in the tent. So you can effectively close the door and close the gangway off entirely. And the curtains come down far enough such that they can limit the cold air rising from below as well. So those are the side curtains. There's one on each side. And then up top there are the two hood curtains. And so those run up on a rail around the cab on the interior here. So you can see that there's a railing there for the side curtain. And then there's a second one that runs all the way around the corner of the cab. It's a little hard to see with the lighting in the shop here. You can see that piece of bar that runs all the way around the perimeter of the cab. And so the hood curtain can close up. And then we got some brass snaps here so that we can and rings so we can clip these guys onto the rings and close up the top. And then when you batten down the top cold doors in the tender, you've got pretty much just an entire wall. And so with all the curtains drawn, 
It is really nice and warm in here. You wouldn't even know it's negative five outside because you've got your 400 degree heated piece of steel right here and you've got a 2000 degree fire right there. And then you've limited any of the airflow out that way. As well, there's a couple more little things that go with this. One is that we have the roof vent on the K37, which is a sliding door, and we have this handle here that we can use to actually close it. We almost always leave it open because you really only need to close that if it is really, really cold outside. So I've never experienced that, and we've railroaded in minus five with this thing. So uh, that must have been for some really, really awful negative temperatures. And I'm talking degrees Fahrenheit here. Sorry for those of you that use a uh, system of degrees and measurement that actually makes sense. And then the last little piece that you have is we actually have steam heat. And we talked about this a little bit in Loco 360 for 491. Up there is the starting valve for the steam heat. And then there's a pipe that runs up and over on either side and comes down to some heating coils underneath the fish racks in the floor here. And so when you open this valve, when you have the starting valve open, the steam will flow through and flow through the heating element. And then we'll drain out this little overflow line down here. And so when you got that flowing, that really puts the extra heat in. So typically what ends up happening, if it's windy and cold out, you'll keep the windows and doors shut You'll draw the curtains, and that way you're limiting the wind and you're not getting wind chill. And then if it's really, really cold out, typically the engineer will turn his steam heat on. But the reality of the thing is that the fireman, the fireman's usually down to about shorts and a t-shirt, no matter what the weather is when he's scooping coal into the firebox. There have been many a night when we're running the Polar Express going to the North Pole here and it's, you know, minus five or zero degrees out. And the engineer will have overalls on, he'll have insulated overalls on, a big puffy jacket, everything, big hat, and he'll have the steam heat cranking and just be sitting there shaking as he's trying to run the train. And the fireman will be over here, t-shirt and overalls, flinging coal into the box going, man, this feels great. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how that uh, that little bit of motion and then being that much closer to the open fire door really really makes the difference for you but yeah that's one of the little surprising things that people don't think about with steam engines you assume oh my god it's always going to be hot well the reality is without these treatments it's awful hot in the summer and it's freezing cold in the winter you would think it'd be better than that but with the windows closed the doors closed the cab curtains drawn it's really nice in here and uh yeah it certainly makes you feel nice for being marked up as a fireman or an engineer because man being a brakeman and being out on the platform when it's that cold yeah that's no fun everyone's got to do that a couple times <laughs> hope you guys liked this little look today and uh thanks so much for watching we'll catch you next time <laughs>